I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and today's video is primarily about perennials. First, I'm going to show you perennials I've already planted, and I'll explain why I planted them where I did. I'm also going to be planting some perennials today, and I'll explain to you why I chose what I chose for the area I'm going to plant them in. I'm going to talk about cutting back certain perennials, such as catmint and salvia, so that you get another flush of blooms. I'm also going to talk about the Chelsea Chop, which you may have read about or seen a video on. I'm going to simplify that for you. For certain perennials it works, for others it doesn't. And then sprinkled throughout the video, I might show you one or two shrubs that I've pruned, just so you can see how they look. I know there's been a lot of pruning videos lately on my channel, but today you finally get to see some flowers, and that's a nice refreshing change. So, let's get started. So first I'm going to start over here in the side bed and one thing I want to say is I apologize. There's a golf course behind this neighborhood and I don't know what they're doing over there but there's a lot of background noise so I apologize for that. Hopefully you hear me no problem but you probably won't hear the birds as much. Okay this is Little Henry Sweet Spire and it is a gorgeous shrub. There are two of them planted here however they love this spot so much that they're filling in gorgeously. Now, when I first planted them, I planted some perennial ageratum in front of them. And you can see that that's all the green here. And that's all the green going into it as well. So what I wanna do is actually remove a lot of the ageratum now because I think I'm gonna like the look of just having the Little Henry Sweet Spires blooming their hearts out and then being a beautiful green shrub surrounded by mulch. <laughs> mulch, you know, that I keep saying I'm going to put down. So there's no room right now for mulch here. And these are the red and yellow twig dogwoods that are also going to be cut back in a few weeks. And behind that is the mugo pine. So anyway, I just wanted to show you how pretty they are in bloom. I have these in the back as well. I love these plants, just gorgeous. Next, I want to show you this geranium roseanne. I have this in a few spots in the bed. And I have this in a few spots in some of the other front yard garden beds too. This is one of my favorite perennials. It's a sterile plant, so it's going to bloom from now through into November. I had one or two blooms in November last year, not like this, but this is how it's gonna look most of the summer. And behind it is one of the little lime hydrangeas that I planted last year. So look how it's winding its way through the shrub. That is gonna look so pretty when the little lime's in bloom. And then next to that is one of the Japanese Hellerai that I just recently pruned and I showed you that in a video. And one of the things I said I was going to do is cut it back because I wanted to plant perennials in front of it. So now I've done that and I wanted to talk about why I planted what I planted. So one of the things that I want is more evergreen color in this bed in the winter time. It looks gorgeous right now here in mid-June. But in the winter time, I'm just a real stickler for winter color, winter interest. So I planted these two dianthus, and these are Paint the Town Magenta by Proven Winners. And you see the pretty blooms still on them. And there's more that are going to come up, and it'll bloom sporadically throughout the summer. The main bloom for it is in the springtime. But they say that this will rebloom throughout the summer, so that's good. But the gorgeous blue-green evergreen color is what I really love. So those will fill in nicely over time. And then next to that, I planted Bubblegum Candles Veronica. And this is a nice dwarf variety of Veronica. Rabbits don't like this at all. And let me see if I can get in closer here so you can see these pretty, just looks like bubblegum, doesn't it? You got a pollinator loving it right now. And so this will bloom primarily throughout the summer. So what I wanted was more color of a pink variety in this bed. So I'm gonna have you know, a shot of the spring color here. And then as it starts to die off, color wise, that is, then you get the Veronica that kicks in. Now this bloomed a little bit earlier just because it came from the nursery this year and I just planted it. But it looks really nice. And it's a nice contrast to the blue of the geranium roseanne. Now, if you remember, and I'll put a picture up in case you don't and that's okay. I used to have knockout roses in this bed. so around this time of year it was always a sh bright shot of fuchsia color and so that's one of the reasons I wanted to put some pink back in this bed and again when the little lime hydrangeas are in bloom which you can see there's already some small flowers thinking about kicking in 
you know, these flowers are going to be predominantly a lime color to a cream and eventually go to a pale pink into a rosy color in the fall. So the pink is going to really stand out nicely against them. And you have another geranium roseanne. And then in front of this hellerai, I did something similar is I put, because there wasn't as much room, <laughs> I put one paint the town magenta dianthus. And then you have another geranium roseanne. And then you have catmint. Now, the catmint I'm going to talk about in a little bit because I'm going to be cutting that back for another flush of blooms. I also have catmint in the front of this bed. I just took you up the side. And then let me show you a taller variety of Veronica. This is called Veronica First Love. It's a beautiful, similar pink color. And then behind that is a gorgeous, gorgeous Veronica called Royal Candles. And look at that blue color. That is just beautiful. And that really looks nice against the leaves of the red and yellow twig dogwoods. So that's a look at this side bed, how it looks right now in mid-June. And I absolutely love the shots of pink that I added. It looks a lot more fuller. And now let me show you the other side bed and how I somewhat tried to mirror what I did here. So now I'm on the other side bed and I can't stop laughing because now it's like dueling leaf blowers are going on down the block. So <laughs> I apologize. Why is everybody out early on a Monday morning? I don't know. It should just be me and the birds. So that's the heath plants that I trimmed back recently along with the heather back there. These are two calamaris that I'm going to talk about in a minute because these are ones that I'm going to chop a little bit. So here is another bubblegum candles Veronica that I planted. I thought I would mimic what I did on the other side. So I planted that here. I think it looks really pretty in front of the blue star juniper. It's going to be a nice complement to the flowers of the calamaris. And again, once these little lime hydrangeas start blooming, and these are obviously much larger ones because they're older shrubs, uh, it's going to look really nice. Now, what I tried to do here was I tried to divide an extra little Veronica plant I had, and it's struggling to survive. I didn't cut it correctly, and I still stuck it in there with the roots, so I'm hoping it's not fully dead yet. I'm hoping it kind of bounces back. We'll see. This is some calamaris that sort of sprouted. It was a plant that didn't do well, but it's got new, new life this year, so I'm keeping that. And then you have the calamaris. This one is blooming a lot more. It looks very, very pretty. These periwinkle daisy-like flowers just, they steal my heart every year. So pretty. And then down from that, I planted again. This is a Japanese hellerai I pruned. <laughs> and then in front of that also had a little more room in this bed for two paint the town magenta dianthus. So again, get that nice pop of pink that I'll get in the spring and then sporadic color throughout the entire summer. And then of course, the evergreen color, which will be a nice contrast to the hellerai evergreen color. And it'll match the blue star juniper blue green color. So that'll look nice. Now in front of the three Kramer's Red Winter Heats here by the river birch, I planted more annual ageratum as I do every year. And I did it so that I could have more of the matching color to the geranium roseans. So as I was planting them this year, it occurred to me, why am I planting them? In other words, I love perennials so much and they're so easy care. Why am I not just putting some geranium roseanne over here? <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing, I think, for next year. I don't think I'm going to keep planting. I love the annual ageratum, but if I'm looking for that pop of color, it'd be a lot nicer to be able to just put some geranium roseanne here and not worry about it. And then next to the ageratum, I put one more of the Paint the Town Magenta Dianthus. You can see it here. Had a little bit of transplant shock when I planted this one. And just down from the ageratum and the dianthus are three white salvias. And I'll put the name on the screen because I can't remember exactly what type they were when I originally planted them. I planted these in the center bed. These I just transplanted from the center bed. I transplanted them probably about a month ago. Looks like the middle one's doing the best out of the three. But I'm also going to put up a picture now to show you what they first looked like when I planted them years ago. And that's when they had more space and they really shined. But over time with other plants, they just kind of got hidden. So I thought, nope, let's put them back in the sun. 
they'll be happier here. So that's what those are. And I like that. Again, perennials that'll come back every year on their own. In the center bed, I finally dug out the dead winter heaths that weren't doing well, and I replaced them with two peach drift roses, which mimic the drift roses on the other side. You see them down there. You've got a ton of geranium roseanne. I absolutely love it. It's almost covering this knockout rose completely, but I don't care because I am in love with this plant. And then you also have the yucca that I recently cleaned up and showed you how to do that for the season. Look at this. Every year around Father's Day, it blooms so beautifully. Boy, I just love that. That is stunning. So pretty, but just that one. The other one hasn't kicked in any blooms yet. And then down from that is Sedum Autumn Fire. Not only do we already have the broccoli looking flower heads on them, but look at this. There's already some of the pink color and that's way too soon. So um, that's what I'm gonna talk about cutting those down a little bit. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And same with the cat mint. The cat mint, its first flush is basically done. So I'm definitely gonna be cutting that back and I'll show you that momentarily. But I wanna take a walk down this part of the bed to show you that what I did was I did plant three more of the cat's pajamas cat mint. And I got these shipped to me directly from Proven Winners, which was awesome. And so you can see that they're a little bit smaller and they have still a lot of nice fresh bloom on them. That's how they arrived, which was wonderful. So they always say that the first year they need to get settled. And then the second year, as you can see here, and I'll put a picture up on the screen how they looked about a month ago, they really take off. And again, the color kind of matches the geranium roseanne. So can you tell I love that color? <laughs> I really do. So this is the Manhattan Euonymus in our lamppost bed. And it looks so nice now, doesn't it? It looks nice and tame. I pruned this back about, I think a week ago. And it was really nice. I was able to uncover this Kramer's Red Winter Heath. <laughs> so you can see it's actually two plants. So you can see there's a little bit of a space in between them. So I gave them a slight little haircut, not too much. But I cut this back, all these little I guess they're like little tiny flowers. These are gonna be covered with flies soon, which is not really fun, but that's how this plant gets pollinated. And that's fine, it, it helps the pollinators, I'm happy with that. But I tried to give this a nice haircut without it looking too much like a ball. It looks a little bit like a ball, but I tried to keep it natural. I cut back the daffodils and put a lantana there. And it's not in bloom at the moment, but let me take you up the bed and we got a little lime punch that I planted last year. It was like a very tiny plant, but look how good it's doing already. It's great. And then up here, I put a matching lantana. So at any rate, the Manhattan Euonymus has been tamed. Let me show you a shot from the street. Does not look so much better. <laughs> it was a beast. So now I'm on the other side of the center bed and I wanted to show you again, Sedum Autumn Fire, which I'm gonna be talking about in a minute because I don't want the color this soon in the season. It's only mid-June. Then you've got the Calamaris next to it. Here's another shrub I pruned. I pruned, this is a sea green juniper and this was a lot taller and I pruned it down low. So that's what that one looks like. You still have a lot of the really pretty, they're almost like sky blue berries. They're so gorgeous. And then look, more geranium roseanne. <laughs> In the front here is the totally tangerine geum, and I cut that back already. Now, in another video coming up, I'm gonna show you how I cut it back after it was done blooming, and that's in the backyard. But these are the ones in the front, already did that. And then I wanna show you a couple of plants here that I also added. And this is called uh, Starship Deep Rose Lobelia. It's Cardinal Lobelia. And you can see it's just starting to maybe get some flowers on it. But it's got beautiful foliage and it's gonna be gorgeous. I saw this, uh, in fact, I'll put the cover up for you. I saw this on the cover of Bluestone Perennials in the spring and I said, yep, I gotta get that. 
and then I put another one back here. And these were in spots where the salvia previously was. So those will come up and be more summer blooming, which will be nice because the tangerine geum is, I wouldn't say it's done for the season, but I'll get one or two blooms out of it. The, the main bloom for it just kind of ended. It's a spring to early summer bloomer primarily. It is sterile, so you will get more blooms that will pop up sporadically. And in the fall, sometimes you do get another flush. Now over here, I have a big empty space, and that's where I'm gonna be planting some perennials today. And I will be talking about that in a minute, but right now I wanna to switch to discussing cutting perennials back for another flush, as well as the Chelsea Chop. Okay, so the Chelsea Chop got its name from the Chelsea Flower Show in London. And prior to the pandemic, and now this year, it's always held in the first week of June, I believe it is, first or second week, I think it's the first week. Regardless, where it came from was people said if they use the Chelsea Chop as sort of a calendar date to cut back certain perennials like tall sedums, which Autumn Fire is, that would be a good sort of a reminder. So it's called the Chelsea Chop just because people use that as a reminder of when to chop certain perennials. Now, why would you wanna chop this tall sedum? It looks beautiful. I showed you some of the pink already on these flowers. Well, this sedum is primarily, should be, a summer, late summer, into fall bloomer. But you can see conditions are favorable for this and it's loving it right now. Now, what happens if you just let this grow? It'll look beautiful, it'll bloom earlier, which is fine, but the stems on tall sedum get tall, pun intended, so what's gonna happen is they're gonna start to flop and they're just gonna keep growing and then they're gonna flop over. You might have to stake them. You don't really wanna do that. So you wanna keep them shorter. They're still gonna grow more, but what's gonna happen when you cut them is they get bushier, which is really nice. So you can just take snips. You don't even need pruners. Some people even use you know, their hands and that's fine too. But you take off a third to a half. Some people might even go down two thirds. I think that's a little much. But just go down to right above a leaf node and cut. And what's nice is you can root all of these if you want. What you can do, and I'm gonna try this with a few, is you take the bottom leaves off like this, and then you can stick it right in the ground. And I'll show you that in a minute. But for this plant, I'm just gonna take these off now to show you how to do it. And then we'll talk about rooting some. So I saw a British gardener talk about the Chelsea Chop on an older video. And what she did, which was really cool, and I would love to duplicate this, is she took all of her cuttings and she just stuck them in the garden. And she now has this huge, not that it's huge big, but just beautiful, expansive, almost like a low hedge of sedum in her garden. So you know, when I saw that, I said, I gotta do that. Because as we know, plants are expensive and why not, if you can propagate these, and these are supposedly very easy to propagate, why not do it? So yeah, these don't look, that's a bird feather, okay? These don't look that great right now, but they do still have their pretty succulent foliage, and they'll start filling in in no time. In fact, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but some of these are even gonna put out more leaves and get bushier. So from all where I made cuts, more leaves are gonna sprout. It's gonna be nice and bushy. So anyway, that's what I was thinking, is instead of buying more of these, which I fell in love with last year after I planted a few, I said, let me see if I can do a hedge like she did. And then I'll have a problem of having way too many. <laughs> Probably not what I want, right? But I don't know. Too much of a good thing, that's what they say, is not good, but who knows. Now, got two more to do this guy and as you can see the pruners cut these no problem there's a couple of leaves that are more yellowy you can just pull those off and now that's good that one's all done I'll do this one too even though it's a smaller stem that looks a lot more manageable now now I'm gonna just start cutting them way low right there we go I like how this looks Let's get off a couple of the brown leaves Supposedly, you can even propagate these with a leaf. 
you can stick one of these leaves in dirt if you wanted to. That's how easy they are. But like I said, I'm going to go around and do these to all the rest for the season and then they'll grow nice back bushy and then when they start blooming what's going to be nice is it'll be those the flowers are form and then they'll start blooming when they should and there's that bird feather again i've got birds everywhere which i absolutely love all right let's just stop with the bird feather so you can't do the chelsea chop on every single perennial out there there's are certain ones that it's good for uh, sedum obviously is a really good one. Any of the tall sedums, autumn joy, autumn fire, and any of the daisy type plants like asters, uh, chrysanthemums, these calamaris. Now I already had cut these and that's how you can see they're nice and bushy. And the other ones I was talking about over there, we're going to go cut those next. So let's get over there. So these are the two calamaris that I mentioned. They look kind of nice and bushy, but they're growing really tall and they really should be actually smaller than this. And when I cut them back, they're going to actually become fuller and the blooms are going to be a little bit later, but that's okay. And again, nothing fancy on these. Just take them down, grab a bunch, cut them, grab a bunch, cut them. Snips work just fine for this. You can see that I'm being a little bit rough with these, and that's okay. So there you go, I took these down a little bit. And these are going to come back just fine. And now you can see the difference in height between this and I'll go straight across with my hand and you see it goes into this a couple of inches. Now what else is nice by doing this is you're delaying the bloom, which you may or may not want to do for all your plants. What some people do, and you can try this if you want, I'm not into it, but some people want to do this, is you can prune back one for a delayed bloom and leave this one. So you'll have staggered bloom time. And sometimes if you have a whole mass of one flower, that's actually a nice way to do things. It'll prolong the bloom and delay bloom. So you'll have kind of different waves of color, different waves of blooms. I don't know, too much work for me. <laughs> so I would rather just cut these back. And like I said, because part of the reason I'm doing this is they weren't really blooming as much as the other ones that I showed you in the center bed. And that to me tells me that, you know what, they might just need to be pruned back a little bit, kick them in to grow a little bit more, be nicer and bushier. Not that they weren't nice plants before, they weren't angry or anything like that. I mean, that would be kind of weird, right? <laughs> so, uh, yes, I talk to my plants. They're all very nice plants. All right, so that's basically the same height maybe some of these are a little bit taller get these guys here and again you don't have to be perfect with this but just cut off enough and you can see i have a lot here but i only had one or two blooms and what i want is a lot of blooms so that's what i did with this and that's also considered the chelsea chop so hopefully that helps you understand what the chelsea chop is it's easier said than done you don't have to call it that if you want. I could call mine the New Jersey chop or make up, you know, the garden sanity snip, <laughs> something like that. Just something that you can remember on the calendar to do this if you want to do this with your plants. So there you go. So now here's a double whammy where I've got the sedum autumn fire that I'm going to cut back, Chelsea chop, if you will. And then here's catmint. And the catmint isn't something that you necessarily have to, boy, it's all looking really dry, isn't it? God, I've been watering it. You know, you see fresh growth down here. But part of what I'm gonna do because it's done blooming is I'm gonna cut it back. And this isn't a Chelsea chop. This is just something that I do with salvia and you can do it with catmint because you're gonna get at least one or two more flushes of bloom between now and the end of your gardening season, whenever that may be. For me, some of this can go into well into October, November, depending on our mild weather. So it's a similar thing though, is 
you know, I'm not looking to do anything great. I'm literally grabbing a bunch and cutting them back. Grabbing a bunch and cutting them back. Yeah, we let that go right there. And now you can compare it to the other two. And then the other thing, of course, I'm gonna do is do the Chelsea chop. And I'm sure because this is in the front of the bed, I'm gonna have people saying, what in God's name were you doing? We like looking at these flowers when we walk by. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully they'll understand soon when they see the blooms pop back up. But yeah, look at this one, for example. I'll just try to give you a close up. You see that beautiful color. I mean, that's just, that's just beautiful. You know what I didn't do, guys? I didn't rinse these snips off and disinfect them before I started trimming one plant, the catmint, and then going back to the sedum. But it happens sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> Just sometimes do as I say, not as I do. All right, let me trim these other two real quick. So there's two sedum plants here. You can see it a little bit better now that I'm trimming these back. Yeah, they're not looking that great, are they? Hopefully they bounce back. They were much more greener. I think I'm gonna give them a shot of some fertilizer. What I actually haven't put down yet on some of these plants is flower tone. So I think I'll give them a shot of that. I don't like to use chemical fertilizers like miracle Grow, things like that. I'm just not a fan. You can do it if you want. Those ones are really good, I guess, if you are planting a lot of annuals, which I don't really do. I plant a few annuals, but I really, I'm trying more to do perennials. And partly that's because getting older. And when we get older, we want the garden to be working for us. It's still fun to plant flowers, but it's a lot nicer when the flowers kind of do the work for you every year. You have less planting to do. Of course, I still got a weed. But there you go. So that's the cutting back other things like catmint, salvia. And I'll have another video about cutting back salvia in my backyard when I show you some of the other cutting back GM things like that. So that's coming up in one or two videos forward. So what I'm going to do, this is the Sedum Autumn Fire stem, is I'm going to take off the lower leaves. Actually, I could take off almost all the leaves. And I'm going to leave the flower on it. I'm not sure if you have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. I'll try it with and without, but I'm going to just take what's essentially a weed digger or dandelion digger. And I'm just gonna make a little hole and I'm just gonna stick this down in here and cover it up. And let's see what grows from it. And let's do one more. I'm gonna take this, see how it looks. And I'm gonna take all the leaves off of it. And there's a dandelion right next to it, which I am not, even though I've got my weeder out, I'm not about to deal with it right now. I'll deal with it at another point, but we're gonna stick this in and do the same thing, just cover it up. I didn't put any rooting hormone or anything else on it. Get a catmint blossom off of it. And let's just see how these do. The uh, British gardener that I saw do this, she said that, you know, even if 20% of them end up taking, that's a really nice amount. So, you know, free plants. So let's see how those do. And I'm gonna put some on the other side too. And I think what I will do, all right, let's, let's take another one as an example, okay? So this time what I'll do is I will take all the leaves off. Easier said than done. 
But you know what I'm going to do with this one? I think I'm going to trim off, let me grab my pruners here. I'm going to trim off the flowers. Now, there's already like a little leaf coming out right there. I'll just trim that one back a little bit. So this is what I'm going to plant. I'm going to put it in a different area and we'll just see how they take. So I'm going to do a little bit of both and then we'll revisit this later in the summer and see how they're doing. Could be a great thing to do. It could be a failed experiment, but that's what gardening's all about. <laughs> And now I'm ready to plant. <laughs> so I told you earlier that that plant right back here, that's a Starship Deep Rose Cardinal Lobelia. But now I have this empty spot here. And there were some salvia here, which I showed you earlier I transplanted. And as you can see, there's some daffodil stems remaining that I cut back. You can see those. Back here, a lot of the brown that you see on the ground, those are the leftover stems of the tete -tet daffodils, which are the earliest to bloom. And that is Father Gilla, right back there, that is loving its spot. So I wanna fill in this spot. And again, what I wanna do is fill it in with perennials. So here's what I bought. I bought three of these. This is called Lickness Petite Henri. And it also has another name, Ragged Robin. Look how pretty these are. They're perennials, they prefer moisture. These get between, as you can see, they have a lot of basal growth and then the stems jut up from there. And when the flowers are in bloom, it's about between 18 and 24 inches tall. It can get that tall. I also bought three of these. And this is also Lychnis, this is called Petite Jenny. It's a dwarf form of the Lychnis variety called Jenny. What's nice about this dwarf form it's going to have soft lavender pink flowers, but they're gonna look exactly like these beautiful white flowers of Petit Henri. What's also nice about this dwarf variety is it's sterile. So like the geranium roseanne I talked about, this is gonna bloom nonstop all summer into fall. So what Petit Henri does is it's a, it's similar to Totally Tangerine Jam in that it's a late spring, early summer bloomer, although you see it's still in bloom. And then Petite Jenny, which is shorter, it gets about, I'd say, 14 inches tall. That is going to bloom all summer into fall. So I'm going to plant three of those, and then I'm going to stagger these in front of them. And that should fill up this area quite nicely. Now the sprinklers are going off across the street, so that's the latest sound you're hearing in the background. <laughs> All right, so things I'm also gonna to use today to plant these. I'm gonna use Biotone. This is what the bag looks like. It's by Espoma. I use this when I'm planting, especially perennials. I don't really use it all the time on annuals since they are so short-lived. But perennials, I'll put that in the bottom of the hole, mix it into the dirt, and then plant my plant. I got some extra garden soil from the back in case I need some up here. And then I've got my garden kneeler, which I don't know if I fully need it. I'm probably gonna be standing in this area leaning over to plant things, but that's a handy dandy lifesaver. My garden gloves. And then this is an heirloom garden tool I bought myself. It's by DeWitt. You can actually find this on Amazon. I'll put the info in the description below if you're interested. It's made of steel. Look at that very sharp tip. So when you're digging down, the fork on the end can dig through roots, which is really nice. So now I'm all done. 
This spot is filled in nicely. And why I planted them here is because they love moist soil and this bed tends to be moist. The Cardinal Lobelia loves moist soil. The Totally Tangerine GM loves moist soil. The Father Gilla loves moist soil. So they all, they all benefit. The other reason I planted them is because I thought because in the late morning and afternoon, the sunlight is sort of diffused here, even though these love full to partial sun, I thought that they kind of would glow in this spot, especially when they fill out more against the uh, backdrop of the green leaves of the Father Gilla. I thought that would look really pretty. Now for the Petit Henri, the white lickness, one thing I do want to point out that they mentioned with the plant, let's see if we can see any of it, is that when the buds form, let's see, you can kind of see it over here. When the buds form, they have a little bit of a maroon outline. And then supposedly the bottoms of them still retain a little bit of that maroon. So you can see that there a little bit. And you can see how small the foliage remains. It's really when the stems kick in that they go up high. So another reason I planted these, especially the Petite Jenny, besides the fact that I saw on several planting websites, they recommend that the two be planted together, that it's a really nice combo. So I said, okay, I've read it enough times, I'm gonna do it. So remember I said these three Petite Jenny are gonna have these soft lavender pink flowers. And I thought that that would be really nice once the pinky winkies start to get in bloom. I thought that would be a really nice, you see them behind the orange rocket Barbary. I just thought that would be a nice addition of some color down here. So yeah, I like this already. I like this planting. Now I do want to talk for a moment about where I got these because it's one of the companies that I recommended in the spring when I did a video on my favorite plant companies and plant catalogs. And these were all from Rare Roots. And it is a company based in Virginia. They are done with their summer shipping. So you'll have to wait to the fall if you wanna order anything like these, for example. But what's nice, as you saw, is the Petite Henri were a little less root bound than the Petite Jenny. And it's okay because I showed you what to do. If you get root bound, you can pull off some of the bottom stuff so that they can kind of breathe and the roots can start to move into their new home. But what's nice too is they come with these nice plant tags in each one. So they tell you exactly what they're gonna look like, how to plant them, very nice. You can see that the pots were a nice quart size pot, which is really nice because sometimes you can order perennials and they're really small. These were decent quart size pots. These arrived, the Petit Henri arrived in bloom, which was nice. And then these guys hopefully will start blooming soon. But I really love this company. I'm very pleased with them. Their packaging is fantastic. Just everything about them I love. So this is my second season ordering from them and now I can officially tell you, oh yeah, they are good. <laughs> I like them before, I love them now. So there you go, now I have filled in this section and over time, it'll fill in and grow taller and really look lovely. So I am really pleased now that I think I finally got this part of the perennial bed figured out. So that's it for today. I gotta go order more garden gloves. <laughs> Cause you know what I did? I snipped a hole in the thumb. Oh yeah. So I'll leave you with these really pretty blossoms. And until next time, happy gardening. <laughs>